This new home robot can dance, vacuum and tidy up. And it has another feature that's even better. Home robots are taking off rapidly. They can be fun, save time, detect diseases and could reshape society. Emo is an AI robot with some impressive skills. He can help with small things. Emo, uh -huh. turn the light on. He takes photos. He plays games. You can talk to him or shoot him. Boom. <laughs> and he can recognize you and hear where sounds are coming from. Emo has a lot of character. Eilik loses the feet and gains arms. It can communicate and play games with friends. These robots are designed to fight. Japan holds robot fighting competitions. With amusing entrances, samurai swords and wrestling. Look at this throw. This robot mimics your movements using controls strapped to your waist. It has a sword and shield and sensors to detect impacts. Three years ago, people were impressed that Abo could kick a ball. It's a great robot, but it costs $3,000. This new robot costs $500 and it can kick a ball into a goal. It can also work with colors, motion track, recognize you and sort objects. And it's one of a special breed of small robots that aren't just toys. Clickbot was created by an award-winning animator from the movie WALL-E. It can be put together in hundreds of different ways, walking on walls or moving like a snake, and of course, dancing. And there's something special about these two robots. Robots have made Elon Musk the world's richest man. He doesn't care if his employees have degrees. There's no need even to have a college degree at all, or even high school. And his kids don't go to a normal school. He created a school for them where they learn from practical challenges. Our brain has evolved to discard information that it thinks has no relevance. You're being asked to memorize formulas, but you do not know why. Every little flower of curiosity, said Einstein, is crushed. We think that memorization is science, and that's not true at all. Picking a problem and then using math or physics to, to solve that problem is far more engaging. Clickbot and Emo can be programmed, helping people to learn code. The world is short of 40 million coders, and that's expected to reach 85 million by 2030. With Clickbot, it goes all the way from recording and playing back actions to full coding. Some might prefer a programmable tank that fires gel balls and teaches math and science. The company behind it also made my favorite toy, an FPV drone. It helps you see places from a completely new perspective and it pretty much flies itself, almost making up for my terrible pilot skills. The Jetson 1 enables you to fly without a pilot's license. It's probably very noisy, and I guess we'll have to see what happens when it crashes, but it looks so fun, I'd love to give it a go. From the details on their website, it seems a really high quality machine. It uses LiDAR sensors to track terrain and avoid obstacles. If you let go of the controls, it will hover, and there's a ballistic parachute for emergencies. If the flight computer crashes, backup systems will kick in. It can fly for 20 minutes after charging for an hour or two, and the top speed is software limited to 63 miles an hour, which seems fast enough. The Jetson 1 costs $82,000 and it's sold out for this year. It's just five years since the Swedish company was founded, an impressive pace of development. This was their first manned flight. It was brave, with his legs so close to the propellers and a basic controller in his hands. And SkyDrive is aiming to be available next year. This is how it expects air traffic to look as flying taxis take off. The traffic density is certainly ambitious. I think the aviation authorities would require some persuading. But back to home robots. Some of them are genuinely helpful. This one uses lasers to navigate and an ultrasound sensor to detect different floors. If it's a hard floor, it'll clean it by quickly moving a small mop back and forth as it goes. It sounds ambitious, but reviews are pretty positive. There are also pool cleaning, window cleaning, ironing, and mowing robots. The Amazon page for this little thing claims it removes nearly all allergens using UV light. It's an interesting idea, but having read a study, I'm skeptical. 
and one reviewer said it kept falling off the bed. Scribbit can draw on walls and then clear it off, making your home into a kind of etch-a-sketch. It's a pretty cool idea. The reviews are a bit mixed, but as it improves, I could see it really taking off. I have zero art skill, but I'd love to see my daughter's sketches on the wall. If you're going to have an AI face on your desk, you could also put a plant on it. This one can show if the plant needs watering, or more light, or if it's too hot. You can show it a QR code to configure it for different plants. The Labrador Retriever is a simple robot to move things around for people with disabilities. And there are wardrobes that automatically sort clothes for people who can't be bothered. Amazon's Astro can monitor your home and let you know if it sees anyone that it doesn't recognize or hears any unusual sounds. It can be accessed remotely for video calls and when you're home, it can find you to check you get reminders, timers and messages. It can carry drinks and can be expanded to carry a blood pressure monitor or a Furbo dog camera, which throws out treats. And smart toilets are promising to detect diet and health issues. A Stanford study found that it is possible to detect signs of diseases by analyzing your deposits. Of course, robots are also taking jobs. This vineyard robot can work several times faster than human workers. And over a thousand of these robots have been sold, which serve things like ice creams. Autonomous tractors can now till fields using cameras and sensors. And it doesn't even require a new tractor. An upgrade kit has been launched by one of the world's biggest farm equipment companies. Hotel robots are delivering room service. And Flippy uses AI and computer vision to cook fast food. These drones can even identify ripe fruit before picking them and dropping them into bins. They coordinate to avoid crashing into each other. Robot waiters are currently selling for around $20,000. And as the price comes down, they're going to become more common. This manufacturer of locks and hinges has started renting robots at $8 an hour. That's half the minimum wage for a worker. And look how well AI handles extremely difficult questions. What's the rainbow taste like? It tastes like rainbows. <laughs> What's the closest tasting food to a rainbow? A rainbow is a spectrum of light that is visible when the sun shines on droplets of moisture in the atmosphere. So, if you want to taste a rainbow, you will need to find some water droplets in the atmosphere. There are some brilliant AI apps. This one does motion capture. You film yourself, upload it, make any edits, and watch the results. I wonder if it will eventually match the quality of film kits like this. Hi. Can you speak in Greek? Okay, let's see. Ena, dio, tria. There are also apps that can restore old photos, colorize them and sharpen them. There's hardly any detail here, but the AI nails it. It's almost like those amusing police scenes. Maybe he saw the sniper. Or was working with it. Wait, go back one. What do you see? There's a reflection. He's talking to whoever's wearing that jacket. And deep nostalgia can animate photos. This is my granddad when he was a kid. And this is him as a pilot. If he could see the tech today, it would seem like sci-fi. He'd love it. And AI is creating impressive art. The big question of what does it really mean to be human in 21st century? This all leads to me, this feeling of remembering the future. As humans, we have this capacity of imagination. And I think that's one of the most strongest ability to find a solution to any problem. Even if you have no skill, you can use this app to create really interesting stuff. You give it an initial image and a text prompt like Cyberpunk Forest by Salvador Dali, and the art keeps evolving until you're happy. AI also helped to generate these images of Simpsons characters, and it's competing with designers. This one generates logos. You just give it a brand name, pick a color palette, enter some keywords, and it creates a few options for you. And robots are starting to take over some of the most sophisticated jobs. We previously looked at robotic surgery tools, and recently an autonomous laparoscopic robot operated on a pig with significantly better results than a human surgeon. 
It was described as one of the most intricate and delicate tasks in surgery, reconnecting two ends of an intestine. Slightly shaky hands could cause disaster. The robot uses computer vision and AI to adjust the operating plan in real time as soft tissues move and change shape during the procedure. And robot arms are learning new skills. This one can catch things. And this one can throw them more accurately than the researchers that created it. Bionic arms are improving all the time. Tilly was one when her arms were amputated to save her from a life-threatening illness. So the arms are controlled by my muscle sensors. Um, the sensors on the inside, so whatever I do with my muscles, I can control the fingers. So if I squeeze the muscles, they'll close, and if I flex, they'll open. These hands have been made by Umbanus in five years, and if this is what they can achieve in five, just think of what they can achieve in another five. So I'm really excited about the future. Brain-controlled prosthetics are also advancing. Melissa Loomis can even feel through her bionic arm. Oh, right there? Yeah. All right, so let's see if you can tell when you've actually gotten this. So just close slowly. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. OK, and open. The prosthetic feeds back to nerves associated with different fingers. The nerves that feel here on this hand, they're moved here. So that's her thumb, her index finger, she can even feel different temperatures. My hand is cold. Oh, it's cold. Oh, it's very cold. And this synthetic skin has layers of sensors to feed back the sense of touch. If you were to look at a little cross section of your skin and, and see all the different receptors, you would notice that they're not all in one layer. They're offset and some are higher up in the skin than others. So we build the e-dermis to actually mimic that. The top layer, when it experiences something painful, it's going to send you some information back. Further down in your skin, the mechanoreceptors tell you how hard you're pressing. This bionic leg moves automatically, recognizing actions like walking upstairs. And this one adapts to the person's walking style. It registers electric signals from the brain and translates them into natural movements. It's also lighter and more powerful than a normal leg and points to a future where disabled people might have superior abilities. This guy created his own partial prosthetic hand, and it's impressive. Last week I was able to move my hand open and close. Now I'm able to splay the fingers. The next couple of newly regained abilities won't mean as much to those not in the missing parts club, but being able to pick up small items with my index and thumb is a great feeling to have once again. Brain-controlled bionic arms are also advancing, and technology like this could transform us all. The new device is inserted through the jugular vein, up into the brain, where sensors extend into the walls of veins. Over time, cells may gradually grow over the sensors and incorporate them into the tissue. The sensors are placed immediately adjacent to the control center in the brain, known as the motor cortex. The electric signals that form thoughts are transmitted down to a unit under the skin in the chest and out to a computer. It's been approved for clinical trials, with plans for brain control of computers and exoskeletons. A founder of Neuralink has invested in the company. Here it is. Digital spinal cord. A spinal cord injury patient may be able to control a vehicle simply by thinking. A patient who's come home from a war, lost his arms, can pick up his children once again. And the next Stephen Hawking will have no limitations on his or her ability to not only understand but communicate the secrets of the universe. Remarkably, Hawking wrote over 15 books. A Brief History of Time sold over 10 million copies, and his sense of humor was priceless. You believe there could be an infinite number of parallel universes. Does that mean that there is a universe out there where I am smarter than you? Yes, and also a universe where you're funny. Elon Musk's Neuralink is also gearing up for clinical trials, implanting tiny threads into the brain. If you get those electrodes next to a neuron, they can record what that neuron is doing. The robot will be able to figure out exactly what the specific topography of the patient will be, target the areas, and take the surgery from the patient coming in and sitting down to them walking out of the door that same day. Musk believes it's the only way to keep up with AI. If you assume any rate of advancement in AI, we will be left behind by a lot. We're already a cyborg. You have more power than the President of the United States had 20 years ago. 
Uh, you can answer any question, but the constraint is, is input out, output. So we're, we're IO bound. It will create a new layer to the brain to interface with AI. And Tesla and Google are taking AI to another level. Musk recently said that Tesla's robot is the company's top priority this year and could outgrow the car business. And Google recently showed the kind of general AI that could allow robots to take on pretty much any task. Most of our models today deal with only a single modality of data. They deal with images or text or speech. We can build models that take in all these different kinds of modalities of input data, but then fuse them together. We've been calling the system pathways. So the idea is this model will be able to do thousands or millions of different tasks. Whatever you make of all this, if a few companies dominate AI, they'll also control money and power. AI needs to be more fun and accessible, which is where Chewy comes in. You don't need to program him. He'll get regular AI updates and new skills. It could gain a huge number of abilities over time. It could pick everything up off the floor before vacuuming and empty the dishwasher. It's modular and upgradable. And if you work in AI or you want to give it a try, it should be fun seeing the result in your own robot. And it will make maths and physics so much more fun for kids. We're also exploring how it could help develop AI and sensors for prosthetics. I'd love to hear your thoughts. It has to be extremely high quality to allow for years of AI updates and new skills. So the more input we have at this stage, the better. And we need an exceptional team. If you're doing great things in AI and robotics, please get in touch. It'll be a great day when we can show you the robot in action. So subscribe for that. And thanks for watching. What are you waiting for? See, think, do. Popology Networks, your science of what is popular.